Hello and welcome to Ask Me About K-Pop, the essential guide for recent converts and seasoned fans alike. My name is Shannon. And I'm Angelica. And welcome to the show. Um, all right. Today, I did some work today. I'm so excited. We're all students in Shannon's classroom today, y'all. <laughs> um, strap in. Strap in. <laughs> um, so today's episode is something that I, for personal curiosities, have wanted to look into for years now. Mm -hmm. And a while back, somebody on the Discord in our episode suggestions channel, where you can leave episode suggestions, somebody asked about fan songs. And I was like, you read my mind. I've already been thinking about that. So today is finally the day that we're going to explore the concept of a fan song. Mm -hmm. I feel like that is something that we say a lot on the show, like yeah. especially in deep dives when we're just like running through discographies, yeah. we'll be like, blah, 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 there was this, and it was a fan song. And we just like move mm -hmm. on, and we've never we've really never like explained. talked about that. <laughs> but I also felt like that was something, like how do you even explain what a mm -hmm. fan song is? So what I've done today is I've taken a look at a – large number of fan songs 50 different fan songs um to try to figure out like what they have in common and then i essentially like once i had gathered all this data i kind of just had to like write a thesis statement so this is kind of like a ted talk about fan songs i guess like, yeah it was what makes a fan song it was a weird challenge to just like pull together a whole bunch mm -hmm. of like data points and then be like okay so, like, what is the story that I need to tell here? It was, I really had to go back to school for this. And like, But I think you did it very <laughs> methodically because you really, like, you took a sample size from all different ge generations, like, all different years, all different groups. Um, and, like, a, you have a variety of fan songs because then you categorized them, right? Mm -hmm. You looked at the lyrics and the themes and the like musical qualities and like who wrote it and how and why <laughs> and etc. Mm -hmm. And I feel like you you did it. You oh, broke well, down what a fan song is and we can take any song and now we have a list of like quantifiable categories. It can be like is it a fan song? Does it do x y and z? We can say yes or no. Yeah. I mm -hmm. guess so. So I'm really excited to get into it. But before I get into it, I wanted to like ask you or just generally discuss like, what do you think of mm -hmm. like when we would say like, oh, it's a fan song? Like, why would yeah. you say that? Well, the basic definition to me meant that the song was for about or dedicated to the fans mm -hmm. in some way. So whether the lyrics are like explicitly talking about the fans, I feel like for me, fan songs are usually like a thank you, I love you, like we're in this together, you mean so much to me, like that kind mm -hmm, of mm -hmm. song. And I feel like they're usually, you know, very nice and like pleasant, like the moment in the concert where the members get in the carts and they like go into the <laughs> audience and like throw frisbees or whatever, mm -hmm. like the fan service songs. Yeah. That's a fan song to me. Totally. Mm -hmm. Totally. Um, and so I think when I was going into this to get started to find this set of 50 songs, I started with like songs that I knew to be fan songs, mm -hmm. like from my own personal fandom, like, yeah. you know, the songs I knew were shiny fan songs mm -hmm. or whatever. And then as I was going through those, then the like the pattern started to reveal themselves. So then once I needed like the back 20 of my list, I feel like I was just going into people's discographies and then like looking for signs and then yes. like finding things that uh, fit my criteria. Mm -hmm. So I feel confident that all 50 songs on my list are like definitely fan songs. They're not all of them, like for sure. I think we could make the playlist collaborative if people mm. want to like add more fan sure. songs to it or whatever. Um, but I tried to just get like a range so that we could mm -hmm. figure out what some commonalities were. So, um, not all K-pop groups make fan songs. Like I couldn't definitively say that they all do, mm -hmm. especially cause some people have yeah. shorter careers or whatever. Sure. But I do think that it is a very, it is like a K-pop 
trope, yes. you could say. It's a very common thing for groups to do. Um, and I feel like it is kind of easy to be listening through an album and say, oh, this is this sounds like a fan song. Yeah, 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 mm -hmm. for sure. So on my list, like I found that groups like BTS, Shiny, A Pink, Twice, EXO, groups like that have a lot of fan songs mm -hmm. and almost to the point where they do one an album. Yeah. Like there are groups that are more prone to fan songs. Mm -hmm. So those groups are represented on my list twice each. I tried to find like songs with that were very different from each other, mm -hmm. but to do like two from each of those groups just for the... Just for the, for the representation for the that representation. they have a lot. Yes, yeah. yes, yes. Um, so those are all on the there twice. The ratio of it. Yes, yes, yes. So those people are all on there twice. I think I also have ATs on here twice. But other than that, I tried to get like a really good range going all the way from HOT to like songs that were yeah. released. I think you had two sex keys. I had two sex keys and I omitted one because it was a song that sex keys released after they broke up. And supposedly, like, they might have all paid for it, similarly to how Mark paid for GOT7 to release Encore. Oh. So it doesn't appear on any album. So I couldn't find, like, reliable lyrics or any, mm. like, cred. So I omitted it and put something else sure. on the list just because for the, I didn't feel For confident. the sake of reasonable doubt. I like yes. it. Yes. So anyway. Scientific integrity. But it also does seem that all fandoms will claim fan songs anyway mm. like even if a group doesn't explicitly like state like this, this is, is our for fan the song, fans there's one usually that they will mm. latch on to and be yeah, like yeah, yeah. you know this is ours so it's definitely like a part of a fandom fandom culture. culture for sure for sure um so uh yeah that's all i need to say like that's I've got that's all the data and it's all in a spreadsheet. I could share it if people want to look at my spreadsheets. Like it's pretty it's pretty masterful. <laughs> it's pretty well organized. It did lots of drop downs and color coding and stuff. Um, but yeah, so I'll just get into my TED talk now. Okay. <laughs> so we'll start with a really big picture category, which is where I feel like every single fan song, no matter what, will fit into one of two mm -hmm. categories. And one is the absolutely undeniable fan song where the lyrics are directly referencing, like literally being an idol. The fandom mm -hmm. uses one of the common phrases that we'll talk about later. And data wise, 12% of the songs on my list literally use the word stage mm. somewhere in the lyrics. So they're like talking about being, being on an idol. stage. Yeah. And so my first example of a really overtly fandom fan song is Sky Blue Balloons by G.O.D. from their album Chapter 3 in 2000. So, Sky Blue Balloons... Uh, Sky blue is G.O.D.'s fan color. Mm. And as we've discussed many times, first gen groups used balloons, used balloons as a cheering device. Mm -hmm. So it's like literally named after like the what they see. that they see, yeah. the sky blue balloons. And um, the lyrics also like the song starts with fan chants, like mm -hmm. actual fan chants. The group does their greeting right after the first chorus as like part of the lyrics. June lists all the members in one of his raps. And it's just like very clear. Very you can't overt. deny yeah. this is a song for the G.O.D. fandom, mm -hmm. period. Yeah. And this, I thought, as soon as I heard it, I was like, yes, this is what I think of when I think of a fan song. It has that cheese factor that I mm. associate with the, like, love letter to their fans mm -hmm. that the definition of fan song is to me. Sure, sure, mm -hmm. sure. There's definitely yeah, yeah, cheese. Yeah. I think cheese is... Cheese is a, oh. is a commonality for in sure. many of them. But... Your research really surprised me. There's some with the variety outliers. that comes yeah, yeah, yeah. in that the with the variety of shapes a fan song can take. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so the other category that a fan song can fit into is a song that is like lyrically indistinguishable from like any other love song mm -hmm. that a K-pop group might come put out like and sometimes they even have like really overt references to like kissing or like mm -hmm. going on dates and it doesn't mm -hmm. seem to like 
before the fandom. Or it doesn't explicitly name the fandom and the experience of being an idol. Right. It's just Mm -hmm. like a love song, but you know it's a fan song because it was released on an anniversary or Mm -hmm. the title has the fandom name in it or like other things that tell you it's a fan song, but like lyrically there's nothing Mm -hmm. that there's nothing explicit or overt. So an example of that is the song Baby by BAP from their album First Sensibility in 2014. (laughs) Um, So the lyrics of this one are like, I think I've fallen in love and you know how my heart races and it's very like Mm -hmm. romantic, but the song is called Baby and they say baby, baby, like 12, 14 times. I know <laughs> nice. it. They say baby 14 <laughs> times in the song. And their fandom is called Baby, but it stands for Baby Always Behind You. Mm. Um, and B-A-B-Y. so, yeah, B A B Y. And so, and the title is stylized B A B Y mm-hmm. with the periods in between. So that's how you know it's for their yeah. baby, but like, Otherwise, I feel like... Well, I think also you can make an argument that this video that you've linked here is them doing the fan service part of the concert. They don't have the carts because it's like a theater, but they're walking around handing out roses to their fans. roses to the girls. So it is definitely a fan song. And also this one is, again, obviously a fan song by the end because they Mm. do it open. There's like a... I think it's a fake liveness, but there's like cheers oh, in yeah. the intro. And then at the outro, I think they go like, B A B B A. Like, I think there's, yeah, a, there's little a little fan, fan chant at the end. Mm-hmm. But anyway, so those are the two like main categories yeah. of your fan songs. So now we will look at things that you can, if you're looking at a song and you're trying to say, is this a fan song? I have some questions, a rubric you could go through to see. If perhaps it is a fan song. Love it. So the first thing to look at is who wrote the song. Mm -hmm. Because of my sample data, 78% of the songs had at least one member credited in lyrics or composition. And it would be 80% if I counted Woozy writing a song for IOI and Mm. Tableau writing a song for Vix. Mm. It's not their groups, but so anyway, high, high, high percentage compared to like regular K-pop album. That's a high percentage of fan of uh, idol participation. Oh, and way, way different. Um, And I feel like that is something that I've also always associated, like with my initial assumptions Mm -hmm. of what makes a fan song is that the members are in some way involved in the production of the song, whether they wrote the lyrics or they had something to do with the music video or whatever it is like the members have to have something to do with it because it's supposed to be it's part of the the fans yeah it's like dedicated to them so they have to have some kind of hand in it but having the members write the lyrics also means that the members can speak very directly to their fans Mm -hmm. about very specific events that might have happened and i think one of the most striking examples of this on my list is promise xo 2014 from the xo album love me right that came out in 2015 Okay, so like we've talked before about how after members left EXO that like the EXOs barely said anything and Mm -hmm. said kind of nothing about it. This song is kind of the only thing that EXO like said. The only official record. After that, Mm -hmm. because Lei Chen and Chanyol wrote this song. Um, And the lyrics are like, I have just a few to call out, but they're all like very specific and like pretty heavy and very clearly about all of that. Mm -hmm. Um, So like it opens with like, sometimes I close the door and I fall into my thoughts thinking about myself on stage. You even liked my clumsy moments, but I wonder if I even deserve that love. 
And in Chanyol's rap, he says, I know I can't turn back a promise that I've already broken. We are one is their promise. And oh, they, yeah. and it was broken. So like, it's a kind yeah, of like yeah, yeah. heavy fan mm-hmm. song. So I feel like it's not very popular in the EXO fandom as far as the yeah. like fan songs go. I don't think people put promise high on lists. For sure. Because I think a more common and like, key component of fan songs is that they usually tend to be uplifting Mm. in like a we love our fans so much it's like a thank you it's like a happy thing Mm -hmm. but yeah this is so specifically addressing like a dark moment that they and the fans experience together this is really interesting this got me thinking of like oh man I wonder how many like it would be interesting to look at the like apology song right you know and like see like just take a look at the groups that have put out songs that specifically address a controversy because i can't imagine that it happens very often but it's, but it's there's interesting probably to a look few. at yeah yeah and like a lot of the songs did i didn't track it so i don't have a percentage but a lot of the songs did at least include some kind of like that classic idol deprecation that we're like very Mm. used to of them being like, but I was so lacking and I like don't deserve it. Like Mm -hmm. there is a lot of that. And a lot of like, I promise to do more. I'll do better. better. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Yes. 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 Um, But in a totally different vibe, that's not like addressing a controversy. Other songs that I know were like um, influenced by the idols writing them is AT's Aurora uh, was written after their first world tour. And it's about seeing like looking their fans Mm. in their eyes and like seeing them as this like beautiful galaxy of lights. Mm -hmm. And so that's what that song's about. And then twice has a song called 2129, which is about all of the fan letters that they've received. Like it says you saying thank you to me. It keeps me warm Mm -hmm. is one of the lyrics of that one. So like the idols having a hand in it, then makes the song a little more personal, like exactly the fan part. And like you were saying before, it gives the idols a chance to speak directly to their fans so they can address these very specific moments that they got to like share together. Yes. Cause that's a big part of the fandom that we talk about a lot is the like give and take, like the whole basis behind fan chance is that like you came to the concert prepared. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. Cause we're all, because in this it's a together. joint. Yeah. It's a joint effort. The whole concert experience is a joint effort. Which very nicely leads into my next question to ask about the song that you're listening Mm. to, which is, are we overcoming something? (laughs) Because the second most common attribute of all the songs that I looked at were lyrical references to having strength, giving strength, or otherwise overcoming hard times together. 76% of the songs on the list had some reference to Strength. strength or having strength or needing strength. Or what have you? Wait, you said this is the second most common. Is the is the first most common is just uh, it's r- idols r- uh, participating in? The oh, lyrics. I see, I see. Um, yeah. So that was a super common one, and then the other really common lyrics that uh, I found were forty six percent of the songs used some variation of the phrase "the day we first met." And when I noticed this pattern, every time I found it, it got like a giggle out of me because it usually (laughs) happens in the first verse, like almost as a rule. And I just like, every time I saw it, I was like, oh, there it is. Mm -hmm. Day we first met. And I thought that was really funny. Um, Like that as like in the story of the fan song that a Mm -hmm. lot of them want to be like to acknowledge the the amount of time that the fans yeah. have like been with them or whatever. Mm-hmm. And I like that they reference, uh, you know, like their debut day or something mm-hmm. as the day that we first met. Yes. <laughs> because that's fair. It's just like, we, we, don't, we don't know each other. <laughs> um, 38% of the songs at some point talk about holding hands mm-hmm. as well, which I thought was very interesting. Um, and then 34% use the word promise at some point. So those were the most like common lyrical phrases that I was like finding Mm -hmm. across all of the songs, which I thought was really interesting. Um, so the next question is, is there a music video? And if so, what is it like? Because only 46% of the songs on my list have a music video. Yeah, I did not expect, I don't usually think of fan songs as having music videos, mostly because unless, and I know you're going to talk about this, but I feel like unless a 
fan song is released as a single, it's usually like buried mm-hmm. somewhere toward the end. It's usually like toward the end of an album. So I like don't really expect it to come with a music, with a video. music video. So it didn't surprise me that less than half of them had them. But the most common type of music video, 12 of them had were a montage of BTS footage or behind the scenes, behind the scenes. footage <laughs> <laughs> or concert footage or whatever usually slowed down and sometimes was black and white over sure, it. Sure, of know, course. Of for course. the vibe. Um, two of them were lyric videos and then nine of them, which was more than I expected, were newly shot original music videos made for that song. Yeah. Like A Pink's Thank You, which they made for their 10th anniversary, is like the girls like making a photo collage yeah. of old pictures of themselves for the reminiscy vibe, but they like shot a new music video. Mm-hmm. And then Or like AT's Aurora. That one has Yes, a that has a whole dance well. performance. Mm-hmm. So a lot of the songs had choreo, I didn't know, but like a a chunk of them have established choreo yeah. as well. And that actually surprised me when I was watching the AT's one. I it like struck me that it had choreo because I was like, oh, I don't often think of fan songs as having an elaborate choreo because I usually think of them as like the stand the and sing and stand or, or the yeah. or the go into the audience of the like the fan service song. Right. So it's always fun to see a fan song that comes with something elaborate. Yes. Um, and then like the music video for BTS, We Are Bulletproof is a fully animated mm. music video, yeah. which I also expected that there might be more of those yeah. because of the thing of a fan song. Sometimes not feeling like an afterthought, but like for the sake of like promotion, like it's usually not something that I would expect they get the whole group together. So like you would animate a music video or just do lyrics or whatever. So anyway, those were the kinds of music videos you could expect Mm -hmm. from a fan song. Um, My next question that you can ask is, is the fandom being called out by name? Mm. Because 38% of the songs on my list used the fandom name in the title or in the lyrics. And I think that it was very cleverly used in one of the most recent songs from my data, which is Trust Me, Midsy from Itzy. uh, And it was a single released in 2021. So this was a song that I, when I looked at the lyrics, I thought it fit more in the category of the like leaning more towards a regular romantic mm-hmm. song because like the lyrics are like, my feelings for you prevent me from falling asleep again tonight. And oh, I, oh, I feel love and I hope you feel the same way. Mm-hmm. But you know that it is a fan song, not only from the title, but because they say Midzi a bunch of times and that is the name of their fandom, but it's used in the lyrics because Midzi is like, you trust me, right? If you put mm-hmm. G at the end of something, it's saying like, right? Yeah. So they're saying like, you trust me, right? But mm-hmm. they're saying the fandom name a bunch of times. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So like, it's very a clever, clever wordplay. Which I thought was interesting mm-hmm. and had to call it out. Yeah. And that song is so pretty. So many of these title examples were some of my favorites because I don't know why that seems to be a, a Venn diagram for me, but if the fandom name is in the song, it's probably very lovely. <laughs> Um, The other examples from my list, just to name them, of songs that directly have the fandom name in the title of the song, not somewhere in the lyrics, because there were some of those too. But I have Dear Camellia by Cara, Melody Song by B2B, My Buddy by G-Friend, To My Best Friend by Boyfriend, Twinkle by Stellar, With Elvis by AOA, You Can Stay by Stray Kids, Moa Diary by TXT, for Kiss Me by You Kiss and You Jung by WJSN, which was way more than I like expected yeah. to find. And I bet there's like others out there, but that was a nice, easy criteria. Mm-hmm. Is the fandom name in the song somewhere? Got it. <laughs> um, so the next question I had was, what does the song sound like? And before starting the research, I think that my initial thought of what a fan song sounded like was that it was almost always a ballad. Like, I think I was just always thinking of them as being like ballads Mm. or just being that more cheesy, like shiny, colorful kind of song. Yes. Colorful is the one that comes to mind for me because I associate it with the concert cards 
that's Mm -hmm. the kind of vibe, like happy, uplifting. Yes. But I found that that was just like not true (laughs) when Mm. I was going through all of these songs, like the variety in genres was like really unexpected to me. Like there's literally two tropical house songs on this list. I like don't know how that happened, but like, yeah, the genres were much more varied than I Mm -hmm. expected them to be. Yeah. Um, but I would say if I had to like find the most persistent overall genre or feeling is that I would say that most of them lean R and B if anything, like, Yes, but the other <laughs> but the other thing I did notice as that was kind of a pattern was that thirty four percent of the songs were acoustic guitar forward, if not just straight up acoustic mm-hmm. guitar songs, and twenty four percent were piano forward. Mm-hmm. So I think that both of those things are lending to some kind of like, sin- like vibe or sincerity in the like yeah. musical. A like instead bit of softer. making like woo woo K pop, yeah, it's yeah, like yeah. oh. I'm playing the piano for you, my fans. Right, because it's a little bit softer. It's a little bit like more intimate, yeah. I guess. Mm-hmm. By using like those instruments instead. So that was a pattern I found, but like sound wise, couldn't all really nail it map. down all, yeah, over, the all place. over the map. So the next question I had is where does the song appear? Mm-hmm. And 26% of the songs on my list were released as a single. And a lot of those singles were released on debut anniversaries. So that's also a huge tell Mm -hmm. as to show if it is a fan song. So the example I pulled is One and Only from Astro in 2021. So yeah, this song has your has very standard fan song lyrics, including all the things we hoped for only through you. Mm-hmm. Like it's very, it's very fan forward, and you definitely know it because the album cover says, "Aroha, you are my one and only love. This song is for you, as you always make me shine." Yeah, very clear. <laughs> Um, and I also noticed that other song, the other songs that are not released as singles, as a rule, mm-hmm. usually appear on the latter half of an album, if not the last song. Second last, second to last or last song is almost always where a fan song will be. Um, and then other than To Anyone's Goodbye, I believe, and I could be wrong, but I believe that the only other song in my data set that was a full promoted comeback album title that's also a fan song is Thanks by Seventeen from Director's Cut 2018. Uh, yeah, so this was a beautiful song written by Woozy that was Seventeen's like promoted mm-hmm. like song for that album. Um, and the lyrics are like, because they're such common words, I was worried that it wouldn't sound sincere. So I was looking for something better than just thank you. Yeah. And this really breaks the mold of fan songs, I think, aside from the fact that it is specifically titled Thanks. Uh, because it doesn't sound like a fan like we just said most fan songs don't have the big k-pop song but this sounds like just a regular 17 title in that sense like it doesn't explicitly sound like it's dedicated to the fans aside from the fact that it is it is lyrically (laughs) but like if you were just if you didn't look at the lyrics and you didn't know what it was called like you wouldn't necessarily i wouldn't have pointed it out for sure something that was like oh yeah that's probably a fan song but thanks leads me on that note to my next question is, is the song called Thank You? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> because nine of the songs on my data set mm-hmm. were either called Thank You, Y-O-U, Thank You, Letter U, or just Thanks. Yeah. Um, and an example I wanted to talk about is Thank You, Smiley Face by 4 Minute from their album 4 Minute World. <laughs> Um, 
So I wanted to talk about this song because I think that it was an example of something that was hard to, it was hard for me to definitively quantify, but I think that sometimes you can spot a fan song if it sounds completely different from the typical vibes that that group usually releases oh, music yes. in. Yes, like, yes, this yes. does not sound like a mm-hmm. four minute song in At any all. way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I, you know it's a fan song because it's like, it's an acoustic bossa nova song. Like, where did it come from? Yeah. And it's like called Thanks. And the music video is a behind the scenes montage music video. Mm-hmm. Um, but this is one of those like lyrically romantic songs. Like it has the lyric, I'll stop. It has the lyric, I'll softly start my art on the canvas that is your lips. And baby, I love you, my boo, you're my everything. Like it's Mm, very heavily romantic, heavily romantic. But I also feel like sometimes that might be purposeful because I think some groups Mm. definitely lean more into the, the fans are my boyfriend thing than others. Sure. So like, I don't know. I don't have like a bigger point about that, but just something that I kind of noticed like, Hmm, some groups like, yeah, really play this, play that thing up instead. But I loved this song so much when you were talking (laughs) earlier about how like the genres surprise, the variety of genres surprised you. It was like, yeah, like the fucking four minute song has no permission to be so good. Like it's so, so lovely. I really really liked it. And I was like, the whole time I was listening to it, I was like, excuse me? Four (laughs) minutes? What? It can't be. I know. (laughs) Yeah. But that's such an interesting point. I didn't even think about that of like, sometimes it can sound like a fan song because it doesn't sound anything like what they do. Cause yeah, that totally happens. Mm-hmm. I feel like monster X is a good example of For that sure. too. Yeah. Mm, interesting. Um, so some much smaller categories that I expected to be bigger, but I still wanted to talk about are, uh, is the anniversary date in the title? Mm-hmm. This is a category that I thought would take up a ton of space because like I immediately like from my own iPod right. found 514 last page by Monster X, 0419 by A Pink, and Sailing 0805 by Girls Generation. Mm-hmm. So like I just thought that that would be like common, but those were like the only, the only three ones. that I found yeah. really obviously. Um and then boyfriend song to my best friend has the anniversary date somewhere in the lyrics. Mm-hmm. But I don't know, I thought that would be more common than it was. Yeah. Um Goodbye songs, I also thought would be way more prevalent, Mm. um, but I only have three in my data set. And when I went looking for disbandment songs to see if there would like be more, I found that way more often groups just had a regular comeback and then got unexpectedly disbanded. So like they didn't, people don't do proper goodbyes as much Mm -hmm. as I thought that they did. So that was surprising. Um, fan color references were also less likely. I only have four songs on my list that at some point reference to fan color, mm-hmm. like shiny colorful says mint green smile. Um, but sky blue balloons. Yes. But double S five Oh one has a song called green peas. That's for their fans. Cause their color was green and like the balloons and they just look like oh, little green peas. That's so funny. <laughs> I saw this note and I was like, I love that it's not green peas. And because it's like a first gen group or whatever. So their fan color could be simple. Just green. Yeah. Um, that's hilarious. Green peas. Um, and then my last assumption going in was that there would be, that the songs would be more likely to use the word we. Mm. When like, addressing the listener, in it together. Yeah, yeah, when addressing the listener of the song, but I was wrong. Only 16% of the songs used we. Most said you, and others, like I said in those romantic category, straight up address the audience as girl or boy, mm-hmm. like in a yeah. regular song. And A Pink April 19th even uses my love as mm. the only, like, they as just the keep only saying address. my love. Yeah. Hmm. Even though the beginning of the song is like, when we went on the stage on our debut day. Yeah. And then they're like, <laughs> my love. So anyway. Well, I guess and whoever it is, regardless of gender, yeah. it's their love. It's their love. Oh, that's so, how progressive it is. Yeah, you, actually, that's better. <laughs> Wait, I just have to know when I was making the playlist for this. Fun fact, Kristen has four songs with the word we yes, in they the do. title. <laughs> yes, they do. 
Um, okay, so then this is an outlier, but I wanted to take a moment to talk about it. And this was a song I found that is a song about being a fan. Mm. Uh, this is the Mama Moo song, I'm Your Fan, from Reality in Black in 2019. I am a fan. So, Solar wrote this song about Boa. That's so cute. <laughs> um, and like the lyrics like at the beginning are, as if I've been possessed by something for the first time, I feel emotions that I've never felt before. <laughs> and I'm curious all the time. I just want to know everything. I slowly fall deeper the more that I know. Um, and I just think it's so fun, like, to have a song, like, from the perspective of, like, how a fan feels when they, like, yeah, fall for a new bias or whatever. And I just think it's, like, sweet that, like, an idol wrote, wrote that a about, another, about idol. another idol. Yeah. It's just adorable. And I had to call it out. So to end my thesis statement, when I was looking at my whole data set, mm -hmm. I was like, what is the ultimate quote fan song from my list of 50 and based on the criteria and the patterns the song that checked the most tick boxes on my sample list is the promise of hot from resurrection 1998 <laughs> So this song has every lyric reference that we looked at except for holding hands. It was written by Kangta. It has an original music video that SM recently remastered if you want to look at it. It is animated and it features Angel H.O.T. chasing the soul of a frozen child. A chi it opens with the child freezing, freezing to, to death, death on the street and then her soul like flies up like an orb and then Angel H.O.T. chase it around and then remember being H.O.T. There's like a montage yeah. of them like remembering being H.O.T. It's so wild! It's so crazy <laughs> and like what is the plot? Because it's like so H.O.T. I guess is dead? And, like, the dead child who froze in the street, like, brings their spirits back together. Because they're, it's, like, all yeah, chasing and, and then, find And then other. when they, like, finally are all five, then they together, like, survive a flood, which is in heaven? I don't know. <laughs> I was like, why can't you just fly above the clouds? Like, you, you have, have wings. wings. And then they finally, when they get out of this flood together, they find the little dead baby spirit, and then they, like, all enter heaven together i don't know a lot is happening a lot is happening <laughs> but i just thought that it was so interesting that like of all of these songs that i pulled the absolute oldest one and i don't think that it was hot's first fan song because it's from their mm -hmm. third album but it's like it was so explicit and it has hot in the title yeah. i like knew i could count on it but that it like is the blueprint yeah, yeah, like yeah. Because they were, like, the first group to have such big fans and start all that mm -hmm. stuff. So, like... It totally makes sense they that made they would this have fan the song ultimate fan that song. that talks about being an idol, that has all the yep. things. And then from then on, everyone mm -hmm. still carries that with them, I guess. It all comes back to H.O.T. It always does. They are the root of the tree. <laughs> <laughs> the trunk of the tree. Oh, uh, wow. Um, so, yeah, that's, like, the ultimate fan song, according to my uh, criteria. Um, but I have a couple of stray thoughts, mm -hmm. unless you have anything that you want to say about the TED Talk that you've just heard up until now. Any questions or comments before golf I get claps to my stray first. thoughts? A okay, bit, a you. standing ovation of golf claps first. Um, no, I thought that this was great as far as like um, trying to quantify something that we, I think, have sort of struggled to pin down and define before, which is maybe one of the reasons why we always are just like, ah, eh, it's a fan song. And then we just keep going. 
Um, but I love this because now not only is there a checklist that you can use to like see is this a song, a fan song, um, but I think we also were able to see that a lot of trends of like, I don't know, I just feel validated <laughs> that a lot of my assumptions of what a fan song was were true, but also it was fun to like listen through both the sample size and the like condensed playlist because the fan songs are, for the most part, all really lovely. Yeah. And so it was nice to see the variety of genres and that, like, oh, they're not all super cheesy. Mm-hmm. Like, some of them are really beautiful. Like, yeah. that Mitzi song is, God, it's so nice. It's really nice. It's so nice. Um, but, yeah, I just, like, I just enjoyed the journey. Oh, well, good. Thank you. <laughs> um, okay, so some really random stray thoughts I had when I was putting stuff together. The first one is maybe like a question for the audience, mm-hmm. which is Wana One's song 12th Star. What is the deal? Why can't I find it anywhere? Yeah. Because like it, this was one of their very clear fan songs because the 12th star is their fans. There's 11 of them. Mm-hmm. And there's a performances of them like singing it live, and mm-hmm. the melon says that it should be track nine on their album, yeah. but it's not on Apple Music, it's, it's not, not on Spotify. Spotify, it's not like as a track alone on YouTube. Mm-hmm. Why is it nowhere? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I Did, don't was know. it written by the guy who went to jail? And they had to, like, I don't like what does yeah. it? I don't know why it's gone. If anybody knows why it isn't anywhere, please. But that's not on the playlist. I'm sorry, it's, it's the lost. only one that's missing. Um, and then another thing that I noticed and I thought was interesting is that in SNSD's Sailing and uh, the Twice 2129 song, I think, or maybe the One in a Million, one of the Twice songs and one of the Girls' Generation songs specifically have lyrics like calling out that the fans will eventually stop caring about mm. them or that like their love will fade or that like they won't care someday as much as they care now. And I thought that that was just like very interesting to Mm -hmm. acknowledge in a fan song. Like it's heartstring tuggy, but it's also like honest. And Mm -hmm. like, I don't know. I just found it interesting. I found it particularly interesting in the girls generation song because it came on one of their much later albums when like the fandom was, I think Mm -hmm. obviously fading. And so it is interesting. Yeah. Because you don't off, I feel like it makes it a little bit more like it's not necessarily biting because it's not necessarily said like bitterly or whatever. You better leave me. Yeah. Like I know you're leaving or whatever. (laughs) Like it's not like said that way. Um, but yeah, I think it's a rare moment of like, candor i guess yeah from idols that we don't often get or it feels like a kind of like mature response mm-hmm. to the reality of things to yeah. be like we'll all move on someday mm-hmm. but like this moment was yeah. special yeah 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 and like that's something um and then my last stray thought is that in 2 p.m's thank you it includes the lyric It must be so tiring for you. Why do you keep loving me? (laughs) Which I just thought was hilarious because it is tiring to love 2 p.m. It is tiring because they are tiring. (laughs) And I just loved that they called it out in their song. Oh, yeah, that's so funny. They are tiring. And I'm at least, you know. Yeah. At least, you know. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Mm-hmm. So my final question to wrap up this discussion is what are you, some of your favorite fan songs, my personal favorite fan songs. If I, I just picked two for right now, but Mm -hmm. a lot of the songs on this list are songs I like a lot, but I would have to say that shiny honesty is probably my favorite shiny fan song. Um, because it is just a beautiful, simple, acoustic mm-hmm. song with nothing else. Written and, by the members. Yes. And I, when I first was getting into Shiny, the first time I heard Honesty, I'm sure I've said this on the show before. The first time I heard Honesty, I just started crying. <laughs> like just the sound of it, like mm-hmm. not even knowing the lyrics, it just made me cry. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Because it is so, so beautiful. So and beautiful. the lyrics make it even more beautiful. Mm-hmm. And it has that motif that Shiny likes of I will reflect you like a mm-hmm. mirror. And it's like about how the shawls and Shiny hold each other up or whatever yeah 
And it's great. And then my other one is Monster X 514, last page. Like, it's one of my favorite Monster X songs ever. I'm, it, even though it, like, I love that it's a fan song, but it wouldn't even have to be because I just, like, love that song. I think the chorus is so good. But I also thought it was kind of, like, sad. Wait, let me find, let me find the lyrics. There's, like, a specific lyric that, like, is sad from here in the present because Wanho wrote this song. Mm. And the chorus is, We're prob we'll probably have a not-so-typical happy ending. Sometimes sad, sometimes painful. We'll probably take the pain together, too, just like now or whatever. Um, and, like, I don't know. It's sad because the Monster X fandom did yeah. experience deep pain later. Ooh, um, rough. But it's such a nice song, and I love, like, Juhan, the, like, Juhan and I am little, like, call and answer at the beginning of them saying, like, we got to slow it down and remember this moment. Like, that's the, that's the refrain is we got to slow it down and just be in the now, man. I know. This, <laughs> this song always, though, makes me laugh because it's, like, parts of it are so beautiful, and then they're, like, we got to slow it down, and they say, we go, we go, slow it down. Mm. And I mm. always hear... Wiggle, wiggle, <laughs> slow it down. <laughs> and it makes me laugh so hard every time. <laughs> gotta slow it down, wiggle, wiggle, slow it down. <laughs> That's fair. But I love that your two choices were Shiny and Monsta X because so were mine. Oh, really? Yes. Well, Shiny Honesty is my favorite Shiny um, fan song as well. But my favorite Monsta X, Shiny, I mean... <laughs> My favorite Monster X shiny song. My favorite Monster X fan song is Bebe. Um, which is from the... Fatal Love, I think. Yes, I think Fatal Love. Gambler album. Whatever that came out on. One of a kind? Yes. Fatal Love. Um, yes, Bebe. I love that one. I talked about it on one of my, on the B-Sides episode because it was one of my favorites. I just think it's so lovely. Oh, no, Bebe's on One of a Kind. Excuse me. You were right when you said One of a Kind. Ah, One of a Kind. All right. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's so lovely. Um, I already talked about it, so I won't go into depth. Because I already talked about it, I also pulled a new option. Oh, Since we had Shiny as an overlap. Yes. Um, Ace, Stand By You. Oh, yes. <laughs> That song is so lovely. I love that song. It's beautiful. But I also, before your research, I didn't know that Twice 2129 was a fan song. And that is one of my favorite songs off of that album. I think it's so beautiful. Um, and I had to look at, once I saw it on your list, I had to look it up because I was like, what is the title about? And apparently that is the time it was when they all finished writing the lyrics. Yes, because if you look at the like Melon credit, the songwriter just says twice. Like it's yeah. not all of them listed individually. Mm -hmm twice wrote that song yeah they like each wrote a piece uh, they each wrote their lines individually mm. and then they like came together and when they finished it that's what time it was and they all happened to be in the same room together which like ah. they had written parts of it alone but they finished it together beautiful mm -hmm. beautiful <laughs> so the point is that fan songs are lovely and nice and an integral part of k-pop yes. fandom i think like i think that you have proven it is a part of the k-pop formula and it is something that like as a k-pop fan whether you're a newbie and like you have just heard the term fans on you didn't know or you've maybe heard some of these songs and now you will see the pattern mm -hmm. or if you're an, a seasoned fan like us you will have noticed like oh yeah i always knew that that's what that was mm -hmm. like now i have I feel it but mm -hmm. now i know for now sure. i have the terminology for sure to say yes that is a fan song. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, yeah, thanks for coming with me. And thank you for coming to my TED Talk about uh, <laughs> fan songs. I had a really good time digging into this. It's been a minute since we've done, like, yeah. a K-pop academia episode. Mm -hmm. And you know I love chasing down curiosities. So this was oh, a yeah. good time. Absolutely. And there are 
two playlists to go along with it. One that has simply every song that has been mentioned by name or played a clip of on this episode. It's like 26 songs. And then the other one is the bonus full sample size, everything Shannon used um, to compile all of this lovely data. And that has... 49 songs because 12th star isn't on it 101 damn 101 you ruined ruined it <laughs> ruining it you ruined it <laughs> <laughs> um all right with that we'll be right back with the random game all right we are back and this week the random number generator gave us first generation boy group click b mm-hmm. who we have talked about in both our 2000 and 2001 year deep dives because Mm -hmm. they were very active in both of those years they had a tragedy when one of their fans got killed in a trampling one year like we've talked about click b a lot Mm -hmm. they had wild hair in 2000 2001 they were definitely one of those groups that had the root defying Mm -hmm. very large hair and they also were the group that had half band members yes Yes. i believe so because they started they originally had seven members they debuted in 1999 under dsp and they originally were a band that combined rock and dance so i believe if i'm remembering correctly like three of them played instruments and four of them danced yes and there was kind of like a beastie boysy yeah. vibe about mm-hmm. it if i'm remembering correctly but then yes. i remember also because i saw a thumbnail of it in the second part of our 2001 episode they did a song that was like a like little like flamenco-y like slow jam and they were all wearing like red suits and ties and like sitting down in one of their oh. hair like went back really far and crazy and we like screamed yes. it because it was nuts yes but in 2001 they were starting to change the sound a little bit i mm. feel like like last we checked in with okay. click b but All right. well click b had kind of a tumultuous career mm. in the sense that they didn't stay as seven for long um they split in 2002 lost three members um and released an album with just four Then a few years later, they lost another member, so they continued as three. Um, And then they took a bit of a hiatus. I'm assuming there was a lot of military enlistments. It also says here on their Korean Wikipedia that one of the members got arrested for drunk driving, and that Uh, when did that happen? In 2005. Okay, because in 2000. Oh, was it Kim Tae Hyung? No, it was Kim Sang Hyuk. Ah, okay, okay. So Kim Sang Hyuk is one of the three remaining members. Okay. So he got arrested in 2005, and the three remaining members put out an album in 2006. Um, But then they didn't do anything else until 2011 when they came back together for a brief comeback as all seven. Oh, wow. With two singles. Um, But after that, it doesn't really seem like they did too much. Um, They performed at a concert for DSP. um, And then in 2015 it was reported that all of the members would come back for a release at the end of the year um and that's that song reborn okay that that, is on youtube somewhere. and that's their most recent it is their most recent and while it is their most watched i am calling an audible because sometimes we do this with first jenny groups um I'm go I'm going to watch we're gonna watch a music video for a song from 2003 that they did win a trophy for on Inky Gayo. Okay. So it was popular enough and was probably more po- actually more popular than whatever they put out in mm. 2016 or whatever. Okay, so if it came out in 2003, then this is gonna be after the three members left. So it'll just have four of them. Okay. All right, so we're gonna watch Click B Cowboy. Uh, If you would like to watch it with us, you can pull it up and uh, press play when I say go. Three, two, one, go. Oh my God, the freaking airport terminal. I've been in there. It's a really beautiful (laughs) building, but TVXQ filmed so many things in this building too. They like sat there and sang that beautiful song. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, boy. Oh, wow. Okay, so yeah, we're just like cool guys hanging out at the airport. One of us has really bad braids and like a little, what are those hats called? Little newsboy hats. Yeah. 
Um, one of them is wearing like a fur vest. We have a few backup dancers. Somebody's B-boying. break. Yeah. We don't know if he's cute. We don't know if uh, the B-boy is a member. I'm thinking it might just be a backup dancer. Oh, look at that hair. There always had to be somebody with the big headband. Do you have a lip piercing? I was just thinking the same the thing. The quality's too bad I of know. the music video. But I think this other one with littler braids or little, he's Twisties. got some kind of oh, yeah. something. Happening. I don't know what that is. They almost look like just ribbons hanging from the hat. <laughs> <laughs> and I hope that's not what it is. The one that possibly has a lip piercing, I think, looks a lot like you know, you know. Oh, spinning! Wow! Holy shit! That was that a lot was of spinning. spinning. A lot. Okay, this is the only one who has uh, colored hair, and his hair looks like mine did when I put hydrogen peroxide <laughs> in it one summer. <laughs> They are dancing a little more than dancing. I expect. Like yes. actual synchronized idol that dancing one. more than I expect. He looks like you know, no? He does kind of look like you know. Similar chin. I feel like the one with the peroxide here keeps looking like <laughs> Beckyun to me. Like oh! in weird faraway <laughs> shots. <laughs> yeah, they are dancing more than I expected. Well, I guess they were the... Um, they must have been the dance side. Yeah, the the <laughs> band probably was like ba- we the don't band want is probably the ones that this. left. That would make sense to be the three that left. Wow, this guy who's break dancing is going nuts. Oh, his hat's the same color as the member's hair. Oh wow, break! <laughs> They're really featuring the backup dancers. Yeah, the they backup are. dancers were getting straight up close ups in that. <laughs> <laughs> What? Why is there a clown? No, they, yeah, it, there was suddenly a clown. <laughs> what are we cutting to now? This whole music. No, what? a girl is wrapping her hands in a sports bra. Oh, we're outside. Oh, man, we're really switching it up. For like the first two, almost three minutes of a three they and a half cut minute. Away. Yeah, it was just the airport. Oh, and now we're and cutting now to it's a, a girl female boxing. boxing. What does that have to do with cowboys? The one in the fur vest looks really cold. <laughs> <laughs> Look at him. <laughs> oh, they're try they're doing every combo of like yeah, arms of arms that you can try. Ooh, he does Ooh. a little like swirl. <laughs> Yay! Quick quick B. B. That was fun. That was more fun than I thought it was gonna it be. It was more Not fun. Not gonna lie. Well, Click B, we'll check in with you later this year when we start our 2002 deep dive. Yeah, I'm we'll sure see more you'll of them be soon, there. I'm sure. All right, weekly recommendation time. I don't know if I have anything to recommend. I have one. I have a single song to recommend. Mm-hmm. What is it? It is a. I don't think it's that new. How new is it? A couple of weeks new. But I just heard the treasure song, Da Da Di, mm. for the first time this week. And it's been a minute since I've heard a new song that like five seconds in, I was like, love it, immediately love it, great, perfect. I copied the link and I texted it to you. Early contender for like best B-sides oh, yeah, yeah, of the yeah. year. It's like already on my list. Love it. Vocal runs and like, mm. Yes, it's so good. I really like it. I feel like I really want to like Treasure Mm -hmm. because I feel like they've put out, they haven't put out much since debuting, but like half of the things they've put out, I've liked so much. And then the other half feels like a, like a updated Big Bang. It really does. Like they feel like a YG group, like their new, like actual lead single is like not so noisy that I hate it. And it kind of reminds me, like it gives me Big Bang vibes in some kind of way. Mm. Um, but anyway, I really like this treasure song, Da Da Di, D A R A R I. I really like it. So that's my recommendation. Fun. I do. I did watch something new today. I watched Wanho. Clo- uh, I think it's Close Your Eyes. Wait, let me make sure that that's no Wanho. Eye on you. Mm. Um, and I don't. I. 
have I like go on and off keeping up with Wanho singles. This one is fun. It's like the concept of the music video is a little bit darker than some of the is other. This the wolf one. Mm, yeah, he eyes, yes, like, he has like eye it like focuses on the yeah, eye yeah, yeah. or whatever, and it's a little spooky. It's yes. spookier, and they're wearing the backup dancers are wearing like leather and lace. Um, but I mean, it has like the same like groovy, funky, like sexy sound that I think Wano has made mm-hmm. his like solo vibe. Um, and I just love him. Like watching his music videos is always so fun. He's so slutty in exactly the way that I like want men to yeah. be. And he literally wears the tit window outfit yes. like like all the girls are wearing these days and I just I love him I think it's <laughs> like, so I love the way he yeah I love the way he is <laughs> and I just I also find him like really just like stunning to watch like mm-hmm. in that music video I, I say this every time he puts a solo out but like I find it like kind of unbelievable that somebody whose body is that big is so, is so graceful. graceful and this part of this is a partner yes, dance and it's beautiful yeah. and one of my favorite things about his solos is that he he uses co-ed dancers in this one there's co-ed there's men and female dan- men and male and female dancers um but i feel like he usually uses more female dancers and like they do the same choreography Mm -hmm. so that somebody as like masculine and and, like beefy as he is to see him like doing the same sort of like sultry like soft like graceful choreography that these like live beautiful women are doing around him is so fun like such a fun juxtaposition to watch but then in this one he like dances like does a partner dance with them and like the male female dancers like partner up too Mm -hmm. and that's an extra thing that like we don't often get we love a partner dance over here yeah love it Mm -hmm. great those are great recommendations perfect all right that is it for this week. Um, if you would like to get in contact with us, we can be found at AMA K-pop Pod on Twitter and Instagram, AMA K-pop Pod at gmail.com for emails, 181-AMA-K-POP-5 to leave a voicemail, PO Box 26096, Los Angeles, California, 90026 for letters or packages or whatever. Um, Linktree slash AMA K-pop will take you to our Spotify, our YouTube, our Discord. Um, you can join the Discord and suggest episodes like this very episode mm-hmm. or talk with other listeners about whatever you want all day long. And we have a Patreon, patreon.com slash AMA K-pop pod for extra bonus content, usually video content, lots mm-hmm. of fun content. Um, the most recent thing up there is behind the scenes of our Blitzers interview and all the patrons who've been enjoying that and leaving really nice feedback about it. Thank you. Yes, thank you. Um, yeah, that's it. That's it for this week. We will see you next week. <laughs> Goodbye. Bye-bye. Jonghyun, you're our inspiration. Thank you.